Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. For those of you new, I'm Jeanette from Boricua Sewing and Crafts. In this video, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be embroidering some handkerchiefs. And um, as for some of you may know, my, my dad passed away last month and um, my mom wants to give out these handkerchiefs as keepsakes of members of the family. Um, my sister did, got the idea and she did her handkerchief. This is the one that she did. And she did that for the funeral and for the wake. She actually did this on her SC 1900 on a flatbed machine on a 5x7 hoop. Came out really beautiful. It was a big hit. Everyone loved it. They thought it was so cute. My mom loved it so much that she asked for extras. So because I have multi-unit machines, I figured I would help out. So I don't have Nancy's design. So what I did was I went ahead and I created a design of my own. And these are the handkerchiefs that I've made, okay? And they are different handkerchiefs. My handkerchiefs have the lace at the bottom, all right? And I'm going to show you step-by-step step how I did this. This is a great idea, um, not just for, for funerals, but let's say for weddings um, or graduations. You know, you can put happy tears and class of whatever with a graduation hat, you know, or a whole bunch of different stuff. Really neat. They're very easy to do, a little bit tricky if you don't know what to use and stuff, which I want to share with you. So that way you guys can make this for yourself if you want, you know, to do something like this, similar for some type of an occasion, maybe a wedding or something like that. So anyway, let me show you how I did it and why, okay? Now, um, I'm going to put Nancy's away and we're going to show you exactly how I did mine. Okay, so let me move you a little closer here. I'm going to bring you down a little bit. Okay, so let me show you first first things first, okay? Make sure the tripod doesn't fall. All right, now first of all, you're going to need your handkerchiefs. Now, I got a pack of these handkerchiefs for like 15 bucks. It was like 12 in a pack. Really, really cute. And as you can see right off the bat, they are very, very light, okay? So as soon as you get them out of the package... What I recommend that you do is that you use starch, okay? Because you want to make sure that you give the handkerchiefs a little bit of strength before you start to in border. So one of the things that I did was my sister found um, this starch, which is really nice because they have these little scents. They have all different types. They have lavender and all that stuff. I actually like the linen. So I use this to starch all of these um, handkerchiefs before embroidering just to give it that strength. All right. So let's talk about after you starch it. Okay. Um, you know, you iron it, make sure it's, it's nice. You don't have to over starch it. You don't have to put a whole lot, just put a little bit just to give it that little extra, uh, you know, and then what you're going to do is you're going to have to pick your stabilizer. Now I use tear away on this and I'm going to tell you why the tear away you, you tear it off. OK, and then what happens is you really don't have much left under in the back. See, OK, if you use cutaway, you're not going to be able to get this clean finish in the back. Because cutaway doesn't tear. And if you choose to use cutaway and I have cutaway right here. Another thing I want to show you is take a look behind when you start to cut away. You know, when you cut around your embroidery, you're going to still see the stabilizer underneath because as you can see, it's like adding another layer of fabric underneath this thin linen. So you're not, it's not going to look very attractive because as you can see, you can actually see the square. So however you cut around the embroidery, you're going to see that. All right. So I don't recommend cutaway if you're doing these handkerchiefs. I mean, um, yeah, the cutaways if you're doing the handkerchiefs. Stick to tear away, okay? So the tear away that I'm using, if you guys are familiar, and I'll link all this stuff in the video description. I use the tear away that's 1.8 ounces, and I like this brand, okay? Um, this is the tear away that I use. And let's see, where is my sheet? Did I lose my tear away? I think I did, but I'll just get another one from here, okay? So this. It just rips off easy, okay? So I'll be able to take this off when I'm done embroidering. And it's not going to show through, as you can see. Let's look at this so you can see. See how you can't see it? 
Okay. All right, and I'm gonna turn it around. See, and there's still a little bit in there in the um, the lettering, but it doesn't show. See how pretty? Okay, so that's um that's why I use the tearaway. So I just wanted to give you the basics. Okay, so I already told you starch it. Okay, starch it, iron it. Make sure you get all the wrinkles out, really nice and everything. You're gonna use tearaway. All right. And now let's talk about the embroidery file. I'm going to switch you over to the computer so we can take a look at what I got. Okay, guys, here we are. We're at my um, desktop and I am using Embrilliance. Now, what I did was I just purchased a um, embroidery font of a cross. Now, these fonts that you see that I have here, these are from Merly from Embrilliance. They are small fonts. Usually when I am bordered with small fonts such as this, I use a 65-9 needle with 60 weight. In this case, I did not have the 60 weight color thread in the gold. So I tried my luck with the 40 weight and a 75 needle. And as you can see, they came out gorgeous. So the trick is to run the machine slow. Just because your machine goes a thousand stitches per minute doesn't mean you have to. So what I did was I just did it really, really slow. As you can see, it came out really nice and clean. Let's take a look at it again so that you can see. So you can read it all. Looks, It doesn't look all crunched up, okay? Now, some of you guys may ask and say, well, Jeanette, in the past, some of the videos that you've done where you did polo shirts and all that kind of stuff, You've always used a 60 weight thread with 65-9 needle. The reason why you do that is because that fabric is stretchy. This fabric is not that stretchy. It's not going to be worn and washed, okay? As you can see, it's linen. There is really very little stretch to it. So you should be good with using a 40 weight thread and a 60, um, I mean, a 75-11 needle, okay? So you should be okay. Now, the one thing that I will say is be careful with the size of your font. You don't want it too small because 40 weight thread can be thick. And the next thing you know, it's going to end up um, getting all crunched up and it's not going to be, you know, readable. All right. So this was the file that I did. And all I did was I um, created it. I put it in a five by five hoop. OK, I'm using my mighty hoops and I'm doing this on the multi new machine. And once I. Um, you know, created the design that I wanted. I did a test stitch. It came out fine. And I decided to embroider the others. So now let me show you how I actually hoop the handkerchief using the hooping station. Okay, guys, here we are at the hooping station. All right, I've got my dinner napkin and I have my tearaway stabilizer that I'm going to be using. And let me move this over. Um, so I'm going to put this away. I don't need this. And here I have my five by five uh, mighty hoop. OK, so I'm actually going to hoop this on and I'm going to put my tearaway stabilizer on top. And I'm going to show you how I actually measure how I know how to lay down my handkerchief. OK, so I'm actually going to move the camera a little bit closer because I want you to see how I actually do this. And I'm actually going to zoom you in. Well, I think you can see. Okay, so this is the front of the handkerchief, right? So what I usually do is I lay it on, and then you see where I have the lace? I actually put the corner of the lace right here. And then what I do is I move this over, and I make sure that this is aligned with this. Okay, so I'm going to lift you up so that you can see. See how I put the corner right there on the dot? And then if you go all the way up, you see that I align it right there. So that's how I know that it is straight. Once I have this position, then I just hoop the product and take it to the machine to embroider. Okay, so I'll do that. Then I just put that in there. And I make sure it's nice and taut, and it is nice and taut. Okay, so it's ready to go to the machine and embroider. Okay, guys, here we are at the embroidery machine. Um, as I said, I am using a five by five 
Mighty Hoop, okay, putting it in there. I've already imported my design in there. I am using the letter, um, this type of thread, in case you guys are interested in knowing. I like using this type of thread. I think this thread works really, really great. Let me see if I can focus on it. There you go. That's the type of thread that I use. Really cool. I like this. It is a 40 weight thread. Make sure you change your needle and you have a fresh needle in there. Needles do go bad. They get dull. Once they get dull, they make bigger holes in your items. You don't need bigger holes on this. It's very, very delicate. So you want this to look nice, crisp, clean, just like you saw the others. So that's usually um, what I do whenever I have a project starting with this. I always change my needle, get a fresh needle. Don't be cheap with your needles, okay? So I am going to go ahead and start embroidering and um, I will play the music and I'll fast forward this part and then we'll get to um, how I take, remove the, uh, remove the stabilizer, label my item, okay? I always label my items because um, branding is important and package them and ready to send them out. I don't think I have my microphone on me. 
I hope you guys heard me. Okay, so I'll just say it again real quick. Slow down the machine, 700 stitches per minute. Looks nice and crisp, okay? Don't go too fast, right? Don't rush these things. All right, so if you notice, whenever you take it out of the hoop, you end up with some little wrinkles and stuff like that. You're going to have to iron all that out, all right? Never iron, never iron on top of your embroidery. Don't do that. Put a Teflon sheet or another piece of fabric on top if you have to iron within this area. Just something I want to let you guys know. You'd be surprised how many people do that. And then sometimes um, they, they ruin their embroidery design. All right, so when I am tearing this off, okay, and I hope you guys see that, I'm actually putting my finger on top of the stitches as I am removing the tear away, all right? The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want... I don't want to tear on the actual stitches. I want to, you know, be as light, as gentle as possible. Okay, because you don't want to mess anything up. You know, always be um, careful. Don't, you know, don't rush. If you have to rush, then that means you, you should do this another day. That's how I see it. You know, that's how, you know, I don't like to work rushed or anything like that. Okay, so you take out as much as you possibly can. All right, cool. All right, so I got all that done. I'm going to put my stuff in the garbage here. All right, so as you can see, it's done. Now, something that I want to also talk to you guys about is branding your items, okay? Um, if you have a business or something like that, you always want to make sure that people know who actually made this. So one of the things that I do is if you look in the back, I put a label of my uh, Etsy shop right in the back of it so that people know who made it. And as you can see, it's, it's light. You can see the label a little bit through that, but I don't think that it's gonna be a problem. If it bothers you or the customer to have it there, you can always put the label somewhere else on the napkin, it's not a big deal. When you are sewing the label, I recommend sewing slow. Don't rush this. Remember, it's a thin piece of fabric. You don't want puckering and stuff like that. So that's what I usually do. I just go to my sewing machine and I just sew right down. I try to sew in the same place as the, the previous seam. Don't go crazy and stuff because then it'll look kind of funky. And that's how I do it, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just, um, you know, sew my label on the side, okay? And then I'm going to iron the, the outside of it just to get rid of the the little marks that you see right here so that way it looks good okay so I'm going to move you over to the sewing machine so that you can see uh, me sewing the label okay I am at my sewing machine and my SC 1900 the other thing too that I want to mention is when you are making these and I want you to notice also in the back you have a bunch of tails. What I recommend you do is try to cut as much of the tails as you possibly can, okay? Because that way, you know, it looks okay. I mean, it won't look bad after you iron it and stuff, but I just don't like having the tails. Now, don't cut them too short because you don't want to cut the knot or anything like that. But I do like to cut the tails so that way, you know, it looks clean on the back as well because sometimes the tails can be a little bit too long. There you go. Now, when I am sewing my label on here, I do go slow. And one of the things that I do is I make sure I position this correctly. I like using my knee lifter, so that way I have my hands free. Um, and I do turn the wheel with my hand. Because what I want to do is I want to make sure I position the needle correctly. There it is. And then I lower the pressure foot. And then I just, like I said, go slow. Back stitch. Don't just, don't just sew straight on your label. Because then, you know, you don't really have like a, a tight stitch. And, and this could fall off and stuff. So... And then go slow because you want to be able to sew neatly, okay? You don't want to, you don't, you don't want a sloppy uh, thing. You know, what I usually do is I slow down the machine because 
you can accidentally hit the pressure foot and the next thing you go zoom and the next thing you're like ah you know so <laughs> just telling you from experience all right so now i do have some tails here i do always cut my tails okay you always want to cut the tails in the front and the back so that you don't have stuff hanging okay there you go. Looks nice and neat. And now I'm actually going to go and iron this. Now, usually what I do is I put a Teflon sheet on top of this, and then I just iron the whole thing. And then we will meet you back at the cutting table. Okay, guys, here I am. I already pressed it. As you can see, came out really nice. And if you give it a close up, you can see the lettering and everything very clear. Beautiful stitch out. The back looks clean. Got my little label on there. It's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So I have made eight of them. They were pretty simple to make. Um, this is something that my mom is giving to everyone as a thank you that came over, you know, um, you know, that sent us cards and condolences and everything she's sending this to family as a keepsake okay um really cute idea i really liked it um you know i'll show you again my sisters my sisters was um she did it bigger you know hers was gorgeous too huge hit really love the way hers came out i love that design of the heart i thought that was really really pretty it was my favorite so i kind of grabbed that one um but yeah, so now this is ready to be packaged and I'm going to send it over to my mom and hopefully she likes it. And um, yeah, this is this, you know, was a really big hit. Very easy to do. Very simple. And um, I love the lace at the bottom. These are really close. So I will put the link in the video description on where I purchased these um, handkerchiefs. OK, and I'll also put the link for the cross, too, because this cross is really, really cute. I like the way it looks and everything. I really love that fancy edges. Those are really, really cute and everything. The fonts, like I said, these are Merle fonts. OK, so yeah, so this is ready to be packaged and sent over to my mom. So, guys, hope you like this video. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, please consider subscribing. And I host Embroidery Happy Hour every Friday where I like to cover a topic on embroidery and um, sewing and all other crafts. So guys, have a great weekend and, you know, enjoy. And like I said, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. So I will talk to you guys later. Bye.